At first glance, you might think this is just another trendy sports bike, but there is much more to it than meets the eye. So what makes this 2022 Ninja 400 so special? It's not the peak horsepower or the 399cc parallel twin engine that makes this bike special. It's not the price. It's not the looks, the reliability, the gas mileage, or even the vast amount of aftermarket parts for extreme customization. What makes this bike special is all of the above. It's a complete package. If you try to find one thing that makes this bike special, you will come to find that it's not any one thing that makes this bike special, but a combination of many things executed in an excellent way. If I could give you an analogy, it's like a pair of shoes that just gets the job done, or another tool that you use in your life that just works no matter what you throw at it, with an occasional surprise of, oh wow, I didn't even know it could do that. I'm SoCal Rider B, and this is my 2022 Ninja 400 for review. Let's go. So how did I arrive at the conclusion that this is a really good beginner bike, if not the best beginner bike? Am I biased because I bought this Ninja 400, or is it really that good from a beginner's perspective? Now I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't think I'm biased, because I was in love with my first bike, I thought it was one of the coolest bikes ever, but after using it for a while, I sold it because it really didn't meet my needs. Now if I experience the same thing with this Ninja, I sell it in a heartbeat and move on to something else, but it's been over 2,500 miles and I find myself loving this bike more and more with each ride. Now, I tested this bike by taking it on group rides, commuting to work, and splitting lanes on the highway, fighting traffic in congested cities, and pushing the handling characteristics of this bike on twisty roads in the hills and mountains of SoCal. In all of my tests, this bike has performed above my expectations, and in even some hairy situations, I've been pleased to have some of the features on this bike that I didn't even really think about. So let's talk about the features and specs real quick. Now this is a light bike. It comes in at 366 pounds wet. Bro, that's Ducati weight. You feel what I'm saying? It has a trellis frame with a ground clearance of five and a half inches. Also, for you shorties out there, if you short like me, check this out. You got a seat height of 30.9 inches. So shorter riders really shouldn't have a problem using this bike. I can easily get both tiptoes on the ground or lean the bike to the left or the right and get my whole foot down. The fact that the bike is light makes it even easier if you're a short rider to feel confident when putting only one foot down. Now for suspension, we got a 41 millimeter non-adjustable suspension and that's your fork on the front. In the rear, we got a 5.1 inch shock in the rear and it only has adjustable spring preload. Now the tires, they coming in at 110, 70, 17 in the front and 150, 70, 17 in the rear. On this model, the brakes are semi-floating pedal style brakes. You're going to have that on all the Ninjas actually, but this model does have ABS. You're not going to have ABS on every model. You got two pistons on the front caliper and a disc size of 310 millimeters and a single piston in the rear with a disc size of 220 millimeter. The pedal disc, the reason they're shaped like that, that's supposed to help the bike, you know, dissipate the heat when you're hitting those brakes for a long time. Now, the fact that this is standard on the bike really does speak to the sporty nature and the intent that the designers of this bike had for you to really treat this bike like the sport bike that it was designed to be. Looking at the power, we got a four-stroke parallel twin engine pushing 399cc with liquid cooling. Now, that comes out to about 49 horsepower and 28 foot-pounds of torque. All right, for the gearbox, we got a six-speed transmission and it is equipped with an assist slipper clutch. And straight up, I could speak to how easy it is to open this clutch, which really does help newer riders with wrist fatigue, so that's a bonus. Ninja 400 is also equipped with an eco mode, and that shows on the cockpit when you ride somewhere around 6,500 RPM or below. Really does help with gas mileage. This model does have ABS, but it's not able to be toggled on or off, so you're gonna always have it on. Keep that in mind, if you plan to take it to the track, as I heard some people don't like to have ABS on the rear wheel when they take a bike to the track. So, what does this bike come with when you first buy it? You know, if you buy it new, what does it come with? Well, it's gonna come with two keys, 
a toolkit, a manual, and a safety comic book, which is pretty cool, especially if you haven't been to the MSF course, because I feel like it really tries to inform you about safety, which is cool. It could also just be a lawsuit thing, but it seems like they really care about you not getting on this spaceship, going too fast, and warp speeding into a tree and hurting yourself. Zero and lift off. So how much does something like this cost? Well, for this model, it's the 2022 Kawasaki Ninja KRT, which stands for Kawasaki Racing Team Edition. It does come with ABS. So if you buy this bike new, you're looking at about $6,529 after dealer markup. If you can find this model used, it looks like it's selling somewhere for about $5,900 on Cycle Trader. I haven't really found any private parties that are wanting to sell <clears throat> a bike that's so new and so cool, might I add. Yippee! Now, when I looked at this bike, I compared it with three other bikes. And those bikes was the Yamaha R3, the KTM RC390, and the Honda CBR500. Now, why did I choose this and not the other bikes? Well, I chose the Ninja 400 because I like the fact that it has class leading power of 399cc. And honestly, I also fell in love with the color scheme and the ease of that power assist clutch. Now, for real, for real, no cap. When I first saw the bike, I didn't like it. I thought it was ugly because I saw it in that matte blue color. And that model also didn't have ABS. And since I'm a baby that might screw up on the bike, I need that ABS. But after I sat on that bike, even though I didn't like the color and I squeezed the clutch, I was like, yo, why is this clutch so easy to pull? Is it broke? Then I did some research on the bike. I found out that it came standard with pedal disc brakes, and I found out that it had other colors. And when I saw that KRT color, I was like, yo, I gotta have it. I also chose this bike because of how light it is. I love the lightweight. And I mean, honestly, in my opinion, it just looks plain cool if you're getting that KRT. And I will also admit, the other colors are kind of grown on me. I'm not hating. If you got a Ninja 400, you doing it. Now, it's a 400, but it looks like a 600 or a 750 size bike from the size, from the side of the bike. I also like that. I like that it didn't look like a little bike. And I also chose this because I felt like it was the best value to money ratio when it came to categories such as power, looks, speed, versatility, performance, and aftermarket customization. Now, all that's cool, but it don't really mean anything if the quality and the craftsmanship is garbage. So let's talk about the quality. All I can say on this is, bro, <laughs> the quality on this thing is amazing. The quality on this thing is ridiculous. The quality on this thing is top notch. I mean, I could go on and on and on. Now, on my first bike, I, I, I'm gonna be for real. I had about three issues that caused me to take it to the dealership on one occasion. And what makes it even worse, true story, bro, my clutch, not my clutch, my shifter where your foot is, it broke off while I was shifting in the middle of a four-way intersection during rush hour. Thank God, thanks to the almighty that I wasn't hit. Also, on my other bike, man, the tires, they lost about one to two PSI pressure every three to four days. And it's kind of crazy because when I do my, my pressure, my pre-ride check on my Ninja, I might lose one PSI every two to three weeks. Like that's just, I know it don't sound like a big deal, but it kind of is. You know, when you're doing your pre-ride check and you're a new rider and you got crap that's just always changing on you, messing up, you're not really happy. Um, but when I tell you the quality of this bike is ridiculous, I'm not exaggerating. So I'll tell you a quick story. When I bought... When I bought this bike, this Ninja 400, and I took it home from the dealership, and I and I finally got on it, I was like, bro, this thing is smooth, but it's also really powerful. Like, I can feel the difference from my first bike. Then when I got home, I decided to go on the, to, the, to the Kawasaki website and look at the ad for the bike, you know, on, the, on their website. And that's when I saw this. I'm going to post this in the video. I was like, yo, they not lying. <laughs> this thing is smooth, like all around. The shifting is legit. The throttle is smooth and responsive. And the handling is so predictive. 
once you get used to this bike, it truly is like wearing a pair of your favorite shoes that just feel so good when you put it on. And as you're just going about your day, you forget you're wearing them. But when you need them to do something like grip or keep you from slipping, you're like, yo, I, I'm glad I got these. That's what this bike is like. I think the other thing to mention here that gets overlooked a lot on bikes is the mirrors. I love how these mirrors... I can see on the sides of me while I'm riding. And if I just tuck my elbows in just enough, I can see the rear. I can see on the side of me and behind me in the middle. And I hear that that's really hard to do, right? And I just love that as a as a beginner rider, I'm not, I mean, the mirrors were just so easy to set and I'm not having to change them to look to the side on one mirror and the back of another mirror because that's what I hear you got to do. That's what I had to do with my first bike. With this one, it's almost like I got the three mirrors in a car, the left, the right, and the middle. It just, they did a great job on that. So I know it sounds crazy, but uh, I'm really happy about that. Now, I tested this bike under a few different scenarios. I tested the handling by hitting the twisties. You know what I'm saying? I also tested how it handled wind speeds and wind gusts on the highway under open conditions where there really was no traffic on, on, on super windy days. Yeah, I'm watching the rise, and I wouldn't say I'm shocked because I'm hardly surprised. This one's for the ride, this one's for who knew I'd make it, just needed some time. This one's for my wife, could have left a thousand times just about my side. This one's for the grind, I knew it would happen, just had the strength in my mind. You know, the handling on this bike, in my opinion, is something that becomes like an extension of your body. Listen to me, do not take that lightly. Like, for real, think about this. Do you have something that you use or wear on a daily basis that just works so well, you forget it's there until you really need it? And, and, and when you really need it in that moment and you use it, it's so good at what it does that it just surprises you. That's literally how this, this motorcycle is, no lie. I was riding this bike in the twisties and I was just moving, right? Dodging debris in the road, hitting corners, braking, accelerating out of tight turns. And it wasn't until about two hours in, in this ride one day, that I realized this bike felt natural and predictive. It, it, it was just me thinking through what I was going to do on the ride. And the bike just responded. And it wasn't until I snapped out of it like, whoa, this is, this is sick. Like, this is amazing. Like, I forgot I'm on the motorcycle. I'm just moving, right? I mean, it, I, you have to ride it to experience it. Like, th this video is not going to do this bike justice. These words that I have on this video are not going to do this bike justice. So, the handling, man, A1. Now, while I was using this bike on the highway, the stock windscreen, the fairings on the bike, they perform really well in my opinion. Now, I did come from a naked bike that left me feeling fatigued in my body while the wind beat me up. So when the wind blows in a crosswind pattern, you will feel this bike move almost like you're going to fall over. That's what it might feel like as a beginner rider. But that's easily fixed by getting tucked in and getting used to how this ninja responds in the wind. So the first 100 or so miles on the bike, I hated the highway. But after getting used to it, it became super easy to deal with the wind. And this bike, in my opinion, handles the wind so well and I'm so used to how it responds in windy situations that I just automatically respond on how to navigate the wind. I mean, I can't harp on this enough. It's seriously at a point where I'm like, oh wait, that was wind? Cause you just get so used to how this bike performs. And I can't say this enough. This bike becomes more and more amazing the more you use it. And you, if you buy this bike and get it, hit me up after your first 1000 miles. You're going to understand how great it is, and I promise you, you will feel the same way. Now, for pulling power, let's talk about pulling power on the highway. So for pulling power on the highway, you can easily hit 70 to 80 miles an hour in fourth, in fourth gear. But in my opinion, this bike is more than enough from a power and an aerodynamic perspective on the highway. So let's talk about this liquid coolant. The liquid coolant, it does perform well. Also, the hottest that I've ever had this bike get while moving slow, slower through the traffic has been about to the fifth bar. I have never had this bike overheat, and I'm also super surprised how long, like with how hot it gets sometime, 
how long it takes for the fan to kick in. Now, I don't think that's a bad thing. I think that that just speaks to the quality of how well designed this ninja is, even down to some simple details like heat management. And this really does make me have a lot of appreciation for the bike. It makes me also love some aspects of the bike that I didn't even buy it for. And I think that's really important because, you know, once you buy a bike, you're going to buy it for the reasons that you like it. Like you're going to buy the bike for the reasons that you decided to buy the bike, but you might get rid of the bike (laughs) for reasons you never even thought were going to be important until you buy it. And this bike has just been a blast. Now, when it comes to comfort on this bike, it really has no problems. I'm 80% for comfort when it comes to this bike because, number one, I can go over an hour or two on it and I'm not feeling like I'm sore or I'm hurt, right? The other reason I I think I'm 80% for this bike on the comfort is the seat really does not hurt, right? Like, it doesn't hurt. It's not uncomfortable. um, And it feels pretty good, right? The other reason I'm 80% for this bike for comfort is because... Even And I mentioned this in another video, even though it looks aggressive, it's not as aggressive. So if you're that beginner rider, you're not used to being tucked down so so far, this will give you more of an upright position while still giving you the versatility to tuck down if you want to tuck down and be more aerodynamic. So I'm 80% for comfort on that part. Here's where I'm not for comfort. A lot of times when I'm riding, the shock is so stiff that I think I have a flat tire. On numerous occasions, I've gotten off the bike (laughs) and checked my tire. Now, I probably got a little, uh, what what do they call that? Like when you're traumatized? I'm probably traumatized from my first bike because I had a flat tire like my second ride on it. And it was the rear wheel. (laughs) So so maybe maybe that's my trauma hitting me. But like low key, bro, I'm riding this thing and I I I hit so many bumps and they don't look like they're bumps. But you hit... This you will feel almost every bump on this bike. The suspension is stiff in the rear. So that's where where I'm not for it. That's where I'm not for the comfort on this bike. The fact that sometimes I can't tell if I got a flat tire or not. Now let's talk about some of the advantages and disadvantages of having this bike. So first of all, I think the advantage of one of the advantages of having this bike, you know, if you're that person that's looking to really develop your skills, you want to start off with a 400. You don't want to really worry about too much power to control. You just want to really get good at mastering the basics of, of motorcycling. I think that's one of the major advantages of using this bike. Uh, the second advantage I think about using this bike, like I said, besides the look, the speed, the power. Like I think if you're watching this video, you already know that, right? You can go research it on your own. So I want to give you an advantage that I think is good. Um, that, that the internet doesn't necessarily talk about. And I think that that advantage is the versatility of the bike and the ability to truly grow with the bike. Now, here's what I mean. I know people are like, wait, wait, wait. What do you mean grow with the bike? It's only a 400. You're going to outgrow it. Mm, yes and no. So here's what I mean by grow with the bike. This is a bike where you can ride it, like super baby it, really practice just, just the basics. But it's also a bike that you can track. It's also a bike that you could race. Another advantage I think this bike has is it really does have that Ninja H2 styling kind of built in. And I love that, you know, Kawasaki didn't say, this is our Ninja 400, it's our cheap bike. You know, we're gonna not, we're gonna give it its own design, its own style. I love that they brought some of the styling and different design elements from their most expensive bike and arguably one of the world's fastest bikes down to the Ninja 400. I think the style of this bike is just beautiful and that that truly is an advantage. That's a subjective advantage, but it is an advantage in my opinion. When we're talking about the advantages of the Ninja 400, right, and kind of sticking along that H2 line. The Ninja 400 gets what they call a swing arm mounting plate, and that connects the swing arm to the back of the engine. And there's a feature very similar to that on the Ninja H2, and it's supposed to make the bike more stable than the other bikes that are on the market competing against it. And and maybe that's why this handling feels so good. Like I said, 
I can't speak for other ninjas. I've never ridden one. But if you got a buddy, you, if you know how to ride, and you got a buddy that, that has a, a 2022 ninja, man, hop on that thing. Give it a shot. You're going to see what I'm saying. Now, even though this bike is good, I think there are some disadvantages, you know, to using this bike. And maybe it's not just with this bike. Maybe it's just with a sports bike. And here's a, here's a disadvantage. If you get this bike and you pull up to the stoplight, you know, at certain places, people are going to want to race you. Not everybody. And when I say people are going to want to race you, I'm not just talking about other motorcyclists. I'm talking about people in cars, people in trucks, even people who know they can't beat you. They'll try to troll you at the stoplight just to see you go fast on that bike. So <laughs> the disadvantage to this bike is if you don't really want attention, you're going to get attention. And some of that attention you get can put you in a tempting place to take actions on the bike that may not be safe for you if you're any level of rider, but especially unsafe for you if you're a beginner rider. So I think that's a disadvantage. I think another disadvantage with this bike for this year are going to be the color options. You really only have three color options. Now, let's be honest, for some people, that KRT edition with that lime green, that's the jam, bro. But everybody's not like that. Not everybody wants to be in your face. So they're only left with two other options. And that option is the metallic matte twilight blue with the metallic graphite gray. The other option you have is metallic carbon gray and metallic flat spark black. That's about as close as you're going to get to matte black. But if you want one of those true blacked out everythings, right? True blacked out everything bike. This is not the bike for you. So how does the Ninja 400 compare to the other bikes that I was looking at? Well, first of all, let's talk about the RC 390. Now the RC 390 is going to have more of a super bike feel. So from the research that I, that I've done and what I've heard from other people, as well as the dealers, it's not really a bike for commuting, you know, so in my opinion, it loses that that versatility for not only tracking it out, but for commuting. The RC390 is, is, is going to be more aggressive in the posture of the bike. Uh, the Ninja 400 is not going to be as aggressive from a posture. The RC390 also only had a single cylinder engine. It still had, you know, a lightweight, a lightweight and a good power ratio, but it is only a single cylinder engine. Whereas the Ninja 400 is a twin cylinder engine and that RC 390 does use the same power plant as the other KTM bikes and the other Husqvarna bikes, bikes such as the Vit Pillin and the Savart Pillin. And I can speak to that because I had the Husqvarna Savart Pillin and it is a vibration like heavy bike only having that single cylinder. So for being on the freeway and the commuting I do prefer the twin cylinder of the Ninja 400. So I feel that that power plant is a lot better. Also, compared to the RC390, once again, we already know this is going to be the fact, right? But the Ninja 400 is pushing more. It's pushing more. Uh, it has a higher CC level, whereas RC390 is at 373 um, CCs. And Ninja 400 is killing the game with the 399. So how does it compare to the R3? Now, I think they both look really good. I think the R3 is a beautiful looking bike. And I do love the color options of the R3. The reason I went with the Ninja 400 is, I mean, it's an R3, right? So it's unfair, but <laughs> the Ninja 400 just had a bigger and beefier engine. That literally is what it came down to. It just truly came down to more power for me when I compared it with the R3. I still think the R3 is a really great bike. I mean, it's a it's a Yamaha. You can't really go wrong with an R3. I think the R3 is cool from a color perspective. I think they still have a you know a big aftermarket supply for you know exhaust, fairings, lights. So it's not that the Ninja 400 is just so much better than the R3. It, I honestly was going to get the R3, but it truly did just come down to having more power for around the same class of bike. And that's the reason why I went with the Ninja 400. Now, the Honda CBR 500. The Honda CBR 500, what I didn't like was that 
the Honda CBR 500 is pushing around the same amount of power as a as a Ninja 400, but it's a heavier bike and it's a more expensive bike. So that was the reason why I didn't go for the CBR 500. And I will be honest, my next bike will probably be a a CBR 600 or a CBR Fireblade. I'm looking at other things like the 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 ZX6 or whatever. But I'm not hating. I'm not hating on the Honda. In fact, I, I trained on Hondas and I think Hondas are great machines, but it just came down to, I couldn't figure out why I would pay more money for a heavier bike to get the same amount of power, right? On a lighter bike and a cheaper bike. So that's why, you know, that's in my opinion, that's how it compares to the uh, Ninja 400. So who is the ideal user for this product? I think the first ideal user for this product is a person who is a beginner rider. Now, beginner doesn't mean it's your first bike. It might, if you're like me, it's your second bike, right? But a beginner is, it's, you've never ridden before. You're gonna start riding. You want something that you can grow with, but not something that has too much power. That's not to say that you can't go get a 600, but if you're afraid that you don't have the self-control, I think this is the perfect bike for a beginner. It's the perfect bike for someone who wants to commute, it's the perfect bike for someone who wants to take it into twisties and have fun. And as they grow their skills and purchase a second or third bike, they would like to keep this bike and maybe take it to the track. This bike is also for someone who says, I really don't want to upgrade anything. I want to take the bike as it is. When I do decide I want to go to the track, I want to have something that I can go out there and have fun on. This is a great bike. Uh, this bike is also for someone who says, if I'm going to buy something in the 400 class, at least a sport bike uh, 400 class, I want to have something that is going to make the most power uh, for the price, then this bike is for that person as well. I think another ideal user that this bike is for is for someone who's been riding a long time. I mean, I got to find this coming. I'm going to drop it in the video when I find it, but this bike is also for the person who's had a 1000, you've had a 650, you know, you've had the leader bikes and the big bikes, but you just want a bike that you can have fun on, you want a bike that has more than enough power, you know, to go from point A to point B, but still do it in style and still do it with enough speed to have a good time on. This bike is also for the veteran rider. It's also for the rider who's had bigger bikes, but you just want something that has a great price, great style, great reliability, something that's very versatile versatile and flexible without feeling like it's underwhelming. That's who this bike is for. Now, who is this bike not for? This bike is not for the person that feels like I have to be able to compete with other 600s and leader bikes on a straightaway. I'm buying this bike because I, I wanna go really, really fast and be able to do power wheelies. This bike is not for you, right? This bike is not for the person who has that self-control. You know, they say, I don't wanna buy two bikes, I don't wanna buy three bikes, I just wanna buy one bike. I have the self-control where if I buy a bike, like a, like a 600 plus, and I can change the power modes, until I grow into it, if, if that's you, this is not for you. Also, this bike is not for the person who wants to go on long trips. You know, as I stated, I did ride this bike about 100 plus miles between two and four hours. It's okay, right? But it's definitely not gonna compare to a cruiser or a touring bike, because even though this bike does a good job, right, from the handling perspective and the 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 not being so aggressive in its posture after two hours my butt did start to hurt you know not my butt so much but my thighs so it is a comfortable bike but it's not designed for that so if you want to go on long trips you want to go off road you want to do camping you want to do touring this isn't for you so in closing what makes this ninja 400 so special as i mentioned it's not any one thing that makes this bike special what makes this bike special is it's a combination of all the things that it does, and it does those things very well. It has great fuel economy. It looks good. It sounds good, especially when you throw an aftermarket exhaust on there. It has amazing re uh, reliability. The bike is very versatile. It has a comfortable riding position that is more upright, but not so upright that you can't enjoy it 
by tucking in and pulling the throttle. It has great brakes, right? You got pedal style brakes. You have a vast amount of, of aftermarket uh, availability for customizing the bike. This is just, in my opinion, it's a great machine. It's also a machine that gets better with time. The more you grow as a motorcyclist, the more you ride it and the more used to this bike that you become, the better your relationship with this bike. This bike is like a fine wine that just ages with time. And I ain't even trying to ride. <laughs> no, seriously, man, it's just a great bike. It has good handling. We talked about that. It has more than enough power to pull on highway speeds. We talked about that. Um, we also talked about the cooling management. This great cooling management. And Kawasaki has done a great job in paying attention to detail. The quality and the craftsmanship of this bike is more than exceptional and second to none, dare I say. I'm SoCal Rider B, and this is my 2022 Ninja 400 review. I'm out. Thanks for watching.